Hey, thank you so much for jumping on here and joining me today for this week's video. I'm so thankful that you're engaging and that you're following along. I want to encourage you to hit the button below and subscribe so you can follow along and get more content like this. I also want to encourage you to like and comment as this video goes along because I want to hear from you. And lastly, if this message touches you, would you share it with somebody else so that they could be blessed by this as well? Well, today I want to share with you a word of encouragement and bring great clarity to you that would be battling your prophetic promise. You're in the midst of a contending. You're in the midst of the fight in the battle to take hold of your prophetic promise. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty much all of us. At some level or another, in different measures or different places, we all have prophetic promise that God has spoken over us that we have yet to see come to pass. And in the middle of that contending, there's a contending, there's a battling, And I believe that many of you watching, you may have just received a commissioning word from the Lord. You received a commissioning word from the Father, but immediately what you found that came right after this commissioning word was great testing, great testing. There's great testing that suddenly came, and you find yourself now in a time of great testing and sifting as you just received this powerful bigger than you word from the Father, from the commissioning from heaven. And I want to start off firstly with this word, and it is a word of encouragement. It's, it is encouraging, and it's this, that every word of God is tested. It will be tested. It actually has to be tested because there has to be an alignment with the assignment. There has to be an alignment in your life with the assignment that comes to you from heaven. And it's an alignment of relationship and intimacy. It's an alignment of identity and character. And there has to be this alignment with every assignment that God releases. So every word of God will be tested. It has to be to prove, really it's a proving and a testing of ourselves to rise up into that word. Jump over with me and look at Matthew 4 verse 1. This is talking about Jesus, and we can step back and look at the final verse of chapter 3, verse 17, and I want to propose to you, I mean, Jesus, this is how he walked, and we are called to walk in Jesus. We are called to walk in him and as him in the same way that he walked, in the life that he walked of humility, obedience, testing, and suffering. We're called to that same walk. Now, we walk in him. We walk through him, but we are called to the same path. We're called to walk in the same steps that he walked. So if he experienced great testing, he experienced obedience and humility, then we are called to the same thing. And let's look at this. Verse uh, 17 in chapter 3, it says this, "...and a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son whom I love." With him, I am well pleased. Wow, what a powerful commissioning word right there. This is my beloved son and whom I love, and in him I am very well pleased. Talk about a powerful commissioning word. This is the commissioning word that really we all receive. We are his beloved children. He loves us and we're well pleased. He is well pleased in us, in Christ. Very next verse, look at this. This is wild. So he gets this major commissioning word. Very next verse, chapter 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. What? Come on. Are you serious? So the father goes, hey, you're my beloved son. I love you. I'm really pleased in you. And then he's led by the Spirit, by the way, not by the flesh, by the Spirit. He's led into the wilderness to be tested by the devil. Look, he wasn't led by the flesh. He wasn't, this was God ordained. God ordained and planned to send him into the wilderness for testing. Every word must be tested. Now, God's word is 100% reliable. He is not a man that he lies. We can stand and bank all of our stuff, put all of our chips in the word of God. But I'm telling you, his word tests us. There has to be a testing and a sifting out in the words that the Father releases. I think about Psalm 105, verse 19. It says this as well about a man named Joseph. And Joseph, very similar to Matthew 4, verse 1, first he receives this powerful word from God that he's really called to be in a palace, but he finds himself in a prison. 
And Psalm 105 verse 19 says, Until the word of the Lord came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. So there's a testing. There has to be a testing. There's a testing in the commissioning word that the Father releases. And why is there a test? Uh, a testing? Because there has to be an alignment with the assignment. I'm telling you, the word that the Father speaks carries with it great potential. It does. The prophetic word that the Father releases holds great potential. But I want to say this and make it very clear. Just because you see something and just because you have received something doesn't mean you have become it. Just because you received a word and you see a word doesn't mean you have become that word. There is a sifting. I'm telling you, the prophetic revelation that the Father releases from his word is present future. And what that means is that it's now and it's not yet. He speaks into your now and he speaks into your future. He speaks, he never, he's, it's not past present. He speaks present future when he prophesies and releases his words over our life. And I'm telling you, prophetic revelation, often, most of the time, it's very rapid in the way that it comes. Now, it can unfold over years and over months, but specifically, the first delivery of a prophetic revelation can come very rapid and immediate. But how many of you know that the prophetic fulfillment of that word is progressive? It takes time. It's a process. Again, with the assignment over your life, there must be alignment in your life, in your personal health, in your character, in your marriage, in your home life. These things are of far greater importance than the gifting on your life. It's way more important to the Lord. These things are of great value to Him. And I'm telling you, the calling and the assignment on your life is in direct connection to your character and your intimacy with the Lord. It's in direct connection to that. So I'm telling you that God is, he's in the business of testing, but it's for our benefit, it's for our alignment, so that we can be prepared to properly steward the promises as we step into them. See, with his word comes testing. It, there's actually a testing that comes with the word that he speaks. And I'm telling you that with much is given, much is required. There's a phrase that it would be like, you know, others may, but you can't. Look, when there's a high calling on your life, others may be able to do that, but you can't do that. Others may be able to do that, but you can't. Others may, but you can't. There's a great consecration and there's a great responsibility in proportion to the call and the assignment on your life. The call demands great preparation and it's a preparation of purity. It's a preparation of character. It's in your heart. It's in your life. It's in your home. It's in the way that you conduct your inner affairs in your inner man so that you can actually bear up under the weight of the call. I'm telling you because if you're not prepared, the weight has the potential to crush you. And look, when there's true prophetic commissioning, and I'm sure you've, you've felt this, when there's true prophetic commissioning from heaven, from the very courts of heaven, it when it even just in its release, it comes with a great weightiness. There's a weightiness even just in the release of it from his mouth, let alone in the actual walking out of it. And because of that weight, God calls us to be prepared. He's releasing us into a testing of our character and of our faith and of our motivation. All these things have to be tested. So the assignment in the mantle comes with an invitation to greater character and integrity to steward it. And this is what I want to make clear right here. I wrote this down. When you get a prophetic word from God, it is as if you receive shoes that have a lot of space to grow into. When we receive a prophetic word from the Lord, a commissioning word, we receive shoes that are way too big. They're multiple sizes too big. And that's intentional because he gives us something that's so big that it requires great stretching and growth to be able to walk in it properly. And, it, and that growth is actually found in intimacy with him. It's cultivated in intimacy with him. In the midst of this testing, and you find yourself in it right now, most likely, is there's a lot of uglies that have to come out. Your marriage will be challenges. Challenges in your marriage will pop up. Issues with your kids. You may have character issues, that flaws that come and become magnified and exposed that you were unaware of. I'm telling you, things will be exposed, 
but it's not for your exploiting. It's for your enclosing. It's for your health and it's for your healing. And all this stuff that's happening, guys, this testing in the wilderness, this being led by the Spirit into the, into the wilderness, the Word of God testing you, this great sifting and this these exposure and this stuff all coming out of you, it's all part of the crushing process that takes place to bring forth the oil, the oil that's going to flow out of your life. And I'm telling you, it's, it's a part of His plan. There must be character and purity in the proportion to the gifting and the power. And it's it we got to learn this too it's that in the giftings and all the things that we receive from him the anointing the assignment the ability the abundance it all will become heavy and burdensome outside of the context of his presence. When we step outside of love we step outside of grace. The grace to move and to walk in our calling, in our commissioned assignment. The grace for that flows in the context of intimate love with Him. So the journey to every promise we have received is a journey to the Lord. We won't see anything that He's promised come to pass by our doing, but by it's by our being. Remember in the Bible, it says that all the promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. What this means is that the promises aren't found in your earning and in your doing, but it's in your yes and in your amen. He's simply looking for your yes to him, not to a specific thing, not to a specific many things, but to the one thing, him. A yes to him is the unlock and the key to receiving and walking in all the promises of God. So the pathway to the promise over your life, is to sit and listen to him. He is the means to any plan or word he has spoken over your life. Any plan he's showing you, any word he's spoken over your life, he himself is the means to that promise. So your job then, our job, becomes to cultivate the relationship, to remain, to sit and listen, to be still, to wait upon him, to acknowledge him, to consider him. And he does the heavy lifting. He's the one that will grow you into those shoes. He's the one that'll do the heavy lifting and carry the yoke upon his shoulders. The government rests upon him. You cultivate the intimacy and the relationship. He'll do the direction and the guiding and the caring and the lifting of the government that he's called you into. Everything. And this word over your life that you receive, this big commissioning word of your life that now you find you're in the midst of it being tested Guys, it moves to the pace of relationship. This will move to the pace of relationship with him and relationship with the body of Christ. So this journey, it's a relational journey. It's a journey of trust. Trust him in the process. Trust him in the exposure. Trust him in the crushing. Trust him in the pain. Every word that he speaks comes with an invitation of testing. But it also comes with an invitation of trust. It carries with it testing, but it carries with it an invitation of trust. So I want to encourage you, enjoy the journey. It's progressive. It's a trust journey. It's a relational journey. It's an intimacy journey with Jesus. Enjoy the journey with him. Walk with him. I want to encourage you that this testing is not forever, but it's a part of the preparation. It's a part of your commissioning call. With the assignment, there must be alignment. With the mass proportion of a call comes the greater call of consecration. Embrace the call. Embrace the consecration. Embrace the testing in the wilderness. Don't resist the Spirit drawing you in to the testing of the Word so that you can be refined and prepared for the weightiness of that call. Lord, I thank you for everybody watching. I thank you for this one watching. God, I thank you that... You are with them in the wilderness. It's led by the Spirit, that you led them there by your Spirit. And it's a part of your preparation, that you're preparing them for the call and the commissioning call that you've put upon their life. And this is a part of that sifting and that refining, that preparation, and that progressive journey of intimacy into the promises that you have ordained. In your mighty name, I thank you for this, and I declare great grace upon them. In your mighty name, amen. Well, hey, I want to encourage you, subscribe, hit the button below. 
Also, like and comment. I want to hear from you. And if this word has blessed you, then share it with somebody else. Share it with a friend. Share it on your social media so that others can be blessed by this word as well. Hey, take heart. Be encouraged. The testing is for your development. It's alignment for the assignment. Bless you. I'll talk to you later.